Right, so we are talking now about clicker training and this ties in really, really nicely with tricks and Pet Tricks Day because clicker training really helps with teaching new tricks. Um, I'm actually chatting with a very, very, very good friend of mine, Kate Gasson, who is um, a, a trainer herself. She's a pet dog trainer for tricks and for obedience um, for all breeds, same as myself. Um, and she does training for dog training for Essex in Suffolk as well as um, Fido's dog training. Um, she's a certified trick trainer just like myself um, but Kate also has her CAP1 distinction in clicker training um, and does use clicker training even more than I do. So um, welcome um, Kate, lovely to talk to you this afternoon. Thank you very much, likewise. <laughs> so for the people listening, Kate has got two dogs. She's got Boo, who is, um, she'll soon be 14, and Boo is um, <laughs> is seven-eighths of a collie and um, and one-eighth of a um, poodle. Have I got that right? The <laughs> very important, that eight. Yeah, <laughs> that eight. absolutely. That's what she is. It's a huge difference, really. In fact, it does. It does. It does. <laughs> and <also> <laughs> Billy, who is Billy, who is four, and Billy is, I can never remember the, all the different terriers, but he's made up of many terriers, isn't he? Well, just the two. He's three quarters Jack Russell and a quarter Lakeland. <laughs> Lakeland, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. I, loved, I knew I wouldn't get the quarters right. But there you go. That's all right. He doesn't care. <laughs> fractions, are very, fractions are very important when it's age. Absolutely. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about clickers and clickering and things like that. Okay. Um, so obviously, Kate, you're like me. You use clicker training at certain times. We don't use yep. them necessarily all the time. No. Nope. Um, but how long how long have you used clickers for has it been something you've done since maybe boo was was a puppy is it something you got into later on yeah it was it was really when I was planning to get boo and I was starting to look into kind of different training methods and I, I think it must have been online that I came across uh, across clicker training and and thought oh that sounds interesting and and it in it totally completely really quickly made total sense to me I, I read through you know tutorials and watched a little bit on YouTube and I thought yeah that totally makes sense I'm going to try that um and then got boo as a puppy and did try it and it worked really well and then I spent a while being really evangelical about it and why doesn't everybody use it for everything um and then calmed down a bit after, after a while and now I don't use it for everything um but certainly yeah for new behaviors I don't think anything can really match it no for like how it's completely clear to the dog what you want and when you want it absolutely it's it's, it's really nice for just it, it, it takes away some of the human <laughs> human mistakes that we make doesn't it yeah it totally. takes away timing errors that we might have with between the dogs doing the thing we want and actually finding a reward or giving them the the verbal reward and it takes yeah it just it emotion. just gives you that little bit of um of of, of breathing space really because once they understand the concept that the clicker means a treats come in then you have got probably a few seconds yeah. because they know they've heard the click they've earned their treats and they do you know they'll wait around while you fumble your treat out of pocket but they still understand what they were being treated for yeah and i have to say with my rubbish hands <laughs> With the tendonitis, <laughs> that comes in handy because the number of times I've managed to click and then I've dropped the treat down my sleeve yes. or yeah. I've managed to drop it on the back of the chair or something daft and my dogs just go, oh, for goodness sake, we know it's coming. We just don't know where. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it can actually be really, really handy for, for things like that as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're, they're quite handy for, for lots of different things. Um, I've I found that when I'm trick training, particularly that clickers and markers are, are quite useful um because so oh. many sort of clicks uh, click clicks tricks even oh, you're oh, working oh. on so many individual stages it, it can really help show a dog that okay this is what we're working on at this point yes you've got that and that helps you to then extend through the stages have you yeah. found that, that using the clickers is quite handy for tricks oh definitely yeah i think the thing is with tricks because some some tricks in particular you're marking something quite subtle you know you might want to even mark an, an ear flick or a tail wag or or something that's quite a small movement so 
having said that obviously it's as long as you get your timing right um <laughs> so your timing does have to be fairly good so I, I don't think click is always for everybody because if you've got terrible timing although I think most people if they practice enough and there's things you can do isn't there to practice your timing without the dog even um but you, you as long as your timing is reasonably good um yeah you can you can just pick out these little tiny bits that you want mm. and perfect those and then work towards something else yes so, so yes really... it's the precision isn't it the precision oh, of the really tiny little life. movements <laughs> yeah when you, especially if you're trying to teach something that's got a prop so you've now got you've got your treat in your pocket you've got a clicker in one hand you've got a prop in the other your dog in front of you and you're trying to remember what bit to click what bit to give the dog mm. uh, yeah once you've got it once you've got your understanding of what hand does what <laughs> mm. It's yeah <laughs> really easy but yeah when you especially when you've got brain fog or something going on it can be a bit what the hell am I I'm, I'm clicked I've clicked this pot that my dog's meant to be putting their face in <laughs> it's like go to plan though for some reason I don't know something's not quite gone to plan here um, but yeah with with regards to timing and, and, and working on exercises um I, I know you've done this before with your own dogs and with other other dogs in training classes as well the um, 101 tricks to do with a box is, yeah is, yeah love that isn't it with clickers so if, if yeah. people haven't heard of this it literally is what it says on the tin it's it's having a box cardboard box any sort of box that, that is a reasonable good size for your dog uh you know if you've got a, a big breed then you're going to want something slightly bigger than a you know <laughs> a, hmm. a, a box that a mug came in perhaps maybe something a bit bigger <laughs> yeah. uh, if you you've got a chihuahua maybe but yeah, yeah it could be anything works. couldn't it? it could be a laundry yeah. basket or yeah. a, or a plant pot it doesn't have to be a box boxes no. are just quite handy and 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 doesn't matter if your dog chews it or it. knocks it over um <laughs> yeah but any, anything isn't it that's it and you just literally for the people listening you've got your clicker you know this is assuming that you've, you've your dog understands what the clicker is for and you just mark what your dog is is offering really you know if they look at the box we click and reward if they go near the box you click and reward if they put their nose inside it if they pour it if they go round or lay in it anything at all you start clicking and treating and mm. uh, the idea being that you are working on your timing and getting the click just right so that the owner is identifying what the dog is doing as much as the dog's identifying what they're doing because we need to be able to see oh oh they move towards it that's what I'm after <laughs> yeah because um, you know if we try and just sit and wait for the dog to do the complete trick it might be we want our dog to get into the box and lay down well they might not realize that in fact most of the time they won't realize that if they've never done it before so that's where the click is handy like you say with breaking it down into small pieces mm. um, we, we click for heading a little bit closer to it maybe putting a paw in there and then getting in there so then you end up with the complete trick but you've broken mm. it down to so many little stages that you're you know you're literally helping your dog get it right as much as you possibly can it's really hard for them to get it wrong they still can yeah. but it's really hard for them to get it wrong. yeah exactly <laughs> and I think as well with the 101 things to do with the box you're not you're not actually looking for anything in particular so oh. they're they're just they're learning to be they're learning to try new things and and be creative because I think very often um and you get this with dogs who've been previously trained with like more traditional methods where they're just waiting to be told what to do all the time yeah yeah um so you know you can always tell a dog who's been trained with a clicker and maybe encouraged to to think for himself because they'll try something and then if that doesn't get a click or a reward they'll try something else um <laughs> and you get all these things that you didn't necessarily set up to out to do and then they'll do something suddenly that's really impressive and you think yes i'm gonna i'm gonna click that again and again and again and and they make up their own stuff but I think it's so it's, it's so it's so good for their confidence. Mm, yeah. Because the worst thing that happens if they get it wrong, wrong in inverted commas, is they don't get a click. Mm. Um, there's no sense of pressure. There's no telling them they're wrong. They just don't get a click. So they try other stuff. Yes. And they offer everything they possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Probably all at the same time. Yeah, exactly. As many yeah. as they possibly can. <laughs> Did get. you want this? Did you want that? <laughs> mm. Did you not see this before? I'll try it again, just in case. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and as you mentioned there, actually, a really nice point with that is they might offer something, like you say, that we've not seen before and wasn't expecting. Mm. Think, oh, my God, that's amazing. And mm. because they've clicked as they've done it, 
they go, oh, oh, we got something for that. You liked that. What did I do? Let me think. And then they try repeating it. Oh. Often if they just do something while they're in the middle of playing or, or doing something else, um, we've got no way of letting them know, oh, I like that. Can you do that again? You might never exactly. get it. Um, so it's really nice at highlighting it. And, and even nicer is your, if your dog's offering it, chances are it's something that they're going to enjoy doing and it's comfortable for them. Mm. Rather than teaching them something that we think, well, I like this trick. I don't know why you're not getting it. It just might not be suitable for that particular dog. Um, no. Whereas if they're offering it, you're more likely to be sure that it's something that they're happy to do and want to do. That's why they offered it in the first place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something they do perhaps naturally. Yeah. Um, because there's lots of stuff that they do do naturally and they can do really easily, but it's difficult for us to engineer, isn't it? And and, and to kind of get, um, yeah. you know, because obviously, you know, there's luring, isn't there? And you can lure them into certain positions, but some things are like a sit pretty, for instance, you wouldn't necessarily, they wouldn't necessarily do it on their own. Um, and you can, yes, you can lure it. But it's about catching those little moments, isn't it? I, and slightly off topic a little bit, but when I when I first started to teach Boo to sit pretty, and it took us ages and ages and ages, and she wasn't getting it, and she normally learnt things fairly quickly. So I thought I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to come back to that in a little while, and, and 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 it ended up being probably six months later that I tried it again. And then the only thing I really changed was rather than clicking the moment when she was just up on her haunches and obviously I was luring with a treat I, I watched for the little movement that showed that she was trying to hold her balance right and click that moment and literally it was like three days and she she got it because I was clicking the moment she tried to hold her own balance rather than just my hand being above her head if that yes that makes yeah. sense so sometimes it's finding the right moment to click and it just makes all the difference mm. Absolutely. Also, having a break, having a break from an exercise or a trick, even without clicker training or not, can make a mm. difference for dogs, can't it? And for us, to be fair. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I've had a few tricks that I've, I've stopped and gone back to weeks, weeks later, and the dog's oh. picked it up. Do you want to cross over here? Well, I'm just moving Ripley from one side to the other because Echo's getting quite gobby. Come over here. I can hear the duck in the background. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. let's do some tricks come on mum my trick stuff's over there <laughs> lunatic you are a lunatic animal honestly the terriers are nice and calm the ducks are mad thing the ducks rioting ducks coming over she's gonna come and get us um <laughs> so um it's okay i know that you um are, are previously in a previous life um were a horse trainer a horsey bird yeah horsey bird um did you ever use anything like like marker training um with the horses or clip um I, I i did not when i was working with them to be honest but because by the time i got boo i wasn't working with them full time anymore but i did try um with my friend's horse um we used to click her what we'd get him to do it was ages ago now so we taught him to to stand up on a box um oh, wow. so target targeting i suppose yeah. um and we also started to teach him a retrieve <laughs> so horses take to it really well because mm. a obviously if you're using small treats they've got much bigger stomachs than than dogs have so they take a lot longer to get full yeah. um they tend to have a longer attention span um and they're less likely to you know go off distracted by a blown leaf or something or oh shiny thing or oh another dog over there so <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> rabbit food, yeah quite um so yeah they they take to it really really well um yeah i i, I don't think there's anything you can probably not teach with a cl clicker with a horse just like just like dogs i know some people do specialize in clicker training with horses and e either ridden or in hand um there was a little i think there was a little um a, a skewboard shetland that they were teaching to be like a, a basically a guide dog oh, wow um, yeah I, I, can't, I think it was called panda um i don't know if it's um there's a trainer called alexandra curland i think i don't know if it was her uh, but she does a lot of horse clicker training on on youtube and facebook as well i think yeah and it's amazing this little um this little shetland uh, was basically doing everything a guide dog does wow and that was all taught through clicker training yeah so um yeah it, it works really well it's and it's great fun and and 
just like the dogs the horses seem to get a real kick out of working out out what you want and they get that sort of aha eureka moment when they get it right and yeah it's great you just have to be a little bit more careful i think um you don't want a horse kind of mugging you for treats no um because obviously they're very very big um so i think generally the first thing most people who click train horses do is teach them not to move towards the treat you know you, you uh, stand still until you offered it yeah. um so the first thing you'd mark is is just them standing still and, and staying away from you um <laughs> because obviously you can't have them just helping themselves no <laughs> for obvious reasons <laughs> Big T, big T, big feet. Might, might not work so well, might it? No, no. <laughs> I've been trading something teeny tiny. Mm. Um, I know, I know that um, the Culture to Zoo, for example. I know they've, they've um, some of the trainers and, and keepers there have used clicker training with the animals, um, and uh, in, including the alpacas. The alpacas have, have learned, you know, to become more confident around people and, and handling and, and being. Mm over and, and things like that not be they're naturally hand shy but through the positive reinforcement the clicker training they've actually learned that that they can trust the the, the keepers and the trainers yeah. um which means that then they can they can be checked over if they need to without being stressed they can be moved from one enclosure to another using a, a head collar rather than needing to go into transportation and be bundled mm. here and there um so yeah it can actually make an animal's life so much more um relaxing less complicated less confusing because the clicker just makes it so clear this is what we're doing here's your reward. Yeah. if you do it again you get another reward there you go exactly so it's, yeah so it's going to say you know it's it's they they increase in confidence and trust because the communication is so clear isn't it yeah yeah and mm. yeah, all the you know as humans we do chat we chat far too much during training and i'm mm. that myself we have we have the whole conversation then a word in there somewhere that we want our dogs to understand uh, exactly. and, and the clicker just helps to make it very black and white yep that's it you did it at that moment yeah. that's what i wanted no matter what else i'm saying <laughs> whatever else is going on around us at this yeah. moment i'm happy yeah um so what how do you feel not how do you feel maybe it's the wrong wording um but do you prefer an actual physical clicker to um say a marker word or a marker sound so it, so i use both um i think it's handy if your dog understands both because sometimes you don't have your clicker on you um and they do something that you really like and and you can quickly snap out yes yeah. and then find a treat um so i think the clicker i think the clicker probably if you've got your clicker on you then i tend to use the clicker yeah. because i think it's so it's just different like we just said it's so different from all the other words we use um and it's quite snappy and it sort of cuts through all the background noise doesn't it yeah. um but yeah i use i use both i i either or really it depends on what i'm doing and if it's if it's a planned session with something completely new then i'd get my clicker out but then sometimes you, you suddenly decide oh i'm going to do xyz now i haven't got my clicker so i use mark word yeah yeah i i use yes a lot and again because of my hands mm. um, and it, I, it, it's just an easy thing for me so i've got clickers bloody everywhere almost pretty much every room in the house i imagine has got a clicker in somewhere mm. um but i found i use my marker words so much now that if i then think oh we're mm. going to learn something completely new let's grab the clicker let's do some work i end up going yes and then clicking <laughs> i've been known to do that as well yeah yeah <laughs> totally. confusing. well which is it i've done yeah <laughs> exactly. <for> everything. <laughs> yeah i do exactly the same thing so i do have to kind of go right which are you going to use then yeah i can't stop okay, using the yes actually <laughs> you're just begging to get the wrong thing here yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes click treat way good well, oh my god yeah Exactly. right so which one was it was it the left paw or was it the right paw yeah exactly yeah yeah which yeah. one I've got so many noises here and i think you owe me mm. some treats because there were definitely more than one marker so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i do prefer the clicker myself when i'm teaching something brand brand new or yeah. if i'm teaching something um that maybe maybe they've done a certain level i want them to do something slightly different with it yeah. Um, so if um if they if i'm teaching a, a, a dog that's just learned poor and i want them to learn to ring a bell i might mm. i might have started going i might have progressed onto a yes where they're touching the bell you know and getting confidence but then if i actually get the, the if i want them to target the um the 
the button of the bell I might go back to the clicker to make it sharp and quick mm. and, and definitely um there's no chance that my throat's going to go yes oh, <laughs> they yeah. not understand what I'm talking about mm. um but but yeah but yes yes is handy you have it on you all the time but the clicker is is just that nice sharp sound isn't it nice mm. nice and snappy Mm, definitely um, and there's so many types of clicker now isn't there there used to be like mm. the box click and then the eye click came out and now there are tons and tons of clickers I, i've i've got mostly um the, the little sort of um oval shaped banana shape almost i click oh brown with plastic. the little button yes yes i preferred because it fits nicely in my hand and I can click that button no matter what my hands are doing. If I drop it on the yeah. floor, I can tread on it if I need to. Um, yeah. And I like the sound of that one. It might sound a bit weird for the people listening, but the clickers do have slightly different sounds. Definitely. Would, uh, Absolutely. I'm quite fussy about my the sounds of my clicker. Yeah. So I do, I do like the button clicker, but I really do like the sound of a box clicker, but they're very, very loud. They are loud. So I do tend to use box clickers perhaps when you're outside and it's windy maybe. Or if you're doing work at a distance, um, so I would certainly not use a box clicker, although I do love the sound of them. Um, I wouldn't use one with really sort of close up work because, you know, you risk deafening your dog in the ears nearest to the clicker. But yeah, I like, I like the, um, the little eye clicks as well. Mm. not very keen on the um there's a sort of blue I can't remember yeah. what make it is it's a yeah, blue clicker and you can you can adjust the um you can adjust the volume yeah apparently <laughs> but I find those rather an unpleasant tinny sound so I don't use those so and, and sometimes if I'm watching um like a YouTube tutorial or something mm. I'll hear their clicker and I think oh that's a nice click <laughs> I wonder what sort that yeah. I wonder what sort that is. Where I don't is know it? whether it's a, a different click or whether it's just because it's through the medium oh. of obviously the video or what have you. But sometimes I do think, oh, that's all I like that. It's a nice click. <laughs> I must ask them what sort of click that they use. Or you get very <laughs> you you hear someone, you hear the sound of a click, but you know it's not a clicker. It's from something yeah. completely different. And you think, oh, oh, what made that? Oh, what was that? I like that. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where can i find that where can i replicate that from uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> how when, funny um when when i had when taylor was young and he started doing some clicker training and he was about i don't know five six months old um but taylor was always noise sensitive and at the time i only had the block box clickers and for people oh, if you're not sure what a box clicker is it literally is a rectangle and the actual part you click is a piece of strip of metal that's slightly inside the top so you have to kind of press into it with your thumb um it means you can't click it any other way you have to have your thumb in in the the part it clicks whereas the eye clicks that we talked about you can kind of squeeze it in your hand or you can have it in your pocket and you can click it with your your, your elbow if you want to um but the box click being that little bit louder the first time i did it taylor ran out the room um and i, oh, I, 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 I and I, no matter what i did if i was training with cassie she was fine with it she couldn't care less he would literally leave the room so i couldn't couldn't use it at all for him so i then was oh, what am i going to do found an eye click got one mm. Oh no, he's happy with that, and he was always fine with that noise. But mm. yeah, he absolutely hated the um, the box one. Whereas Merlin and Ripley, if I'm a training and I've forgotten my clicker, I'll get one out the drawer, which are all box ones. Mm. Yeah, they're not fussed at all. Mm. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a click. I'll have a treat for that. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, they they are really they are really quite loud box clickers. Um, if you accidentally click it too near to your own ear, it can make your ears <laughs> ring a little bit. But yeah, I do, I do like the sound. Yeah. And it's um, the other thing that's, that's handy with the box ones is if it is in your pocket, as I mine invariably are, if you go to bend to do something, you don't then click by mistake. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, I, I must I admit, do. I, I tend to carry my little eye click um, on my belt loop. Of, of my jeans yeah. so yeah that's happened a lot as I bend over to pick something <laughs> up and, and, and it ends up clicking yeah um so you hear the first got... click and go oh damn it <laughs> yeah what, 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 what was my dog doing at that time yeah. <laughs> what have I just clicked <laughs> peeing up the shed was brilliant <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Little monkey the, that the they pearls. are. Really, I've been standing here waiting for that clicker to go off quick. Get my leg off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly where we expect Nern and Billy to be going <laughs> to be doing. <laughs> Bless them. Um, so um so yeah, so so I'm interested to know what your favorite tricks are that you've taught either 
Boo and or Billy, or that you've taught someone else with their dog? And did you use a clicker? Right, so probably um, I really like hide face. Yes. Um, and I think that one is so much easier to teach with a clicker. Or a, or, a, or a marker, you could use a marker, but yeah, clicker definitely. Um, so Boo, Boo does a really nice hide face. Um, and I think I was lucky enough, and it was pure luck, <laughs> when I first taught it to her, to, to teach her a, like a two paw hide. Yeah. So it, it was pure luck that she put one foot up and then the other foot up, so I clicked that. So she did do, she did used to do a two paw hide. Um, and the same with Billy, he he picked it up really quickly. I think it was it was particularly with Boo though when I taught her the hide face that that really brought home to me how much quicker it was to teach anything with a clicker because I think it took about fifteen minutes. I mean it wasn't on cue, um, so I didn't have any sort of stimulus control. But she was offering it over and over again within fifteen minutes, which mm. I'm pretty sure that if I hadn't used a clicker, it would have taken a lot longer um and I think the method I did that with which um yeah, some purists may <laughs> complain about was a, a, a little sticky label on a, yeah, on a muzzle yes. um still use, use still use plenty scrunchies on the nose sticky label on yeah the scrunchies <laughs> um but I, I know some purists would say you know that that was um yeah a and, like and, and I suppose it I think some people use um I think is it Richard Curtis I think yeah. that uses the whole tea yeah um yeah. to teach them does, to swipe yeah. at their nose yeah a um, couple of months um, ago we had him at our place training and he, hmm. he actually did teach that with the whole tea <laughs> yeah. yeah but some people would say that's using aversives which I yeah well it is isn't it but yeah. I, yeah. I think there's there's shades of grey when it comes to things like that I certainly that's don't it. think yeah, I'm yeah. abusing abusing my dog by putting a sticky label on her nose <laughs> a few times in order to capture her swiping and, and at to it. give her a mild reward. yeah exactly a mild yeah. mild irritation I don't see as uh, no, really no, no, no. anything to get my knickers in a twist about that's it yeah it, maybe not... with a maybe with a very sensitive dog I mean there's always there's always extremes isn't there but yeah so anyway yeah. yeah so that was that was the one that really made me think oh my god yeah and it was probably around that time that I got really really evangelical about it <laughs> like, nobody should ever ever never use one, Why you, use a use clicker? one. you need a clicker I've got loads here have one exactly <laughs> yeah let me show you how it works yeah I think I even told my husband all about how it works and he's completely uninterested <laughs> in the whole thing you but must see this stop it. looking at the telly look look at this clicker that's look. it just turn the football what off really. this is much more fun. exciting <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I tried to teach Bernie um, <laughs> to hide face and I tried to use the sticky label version with a clicker um, and he literally just sat there for about five minutes with the sticky label over his eye. See, I think that it's because he's already got a hairy face. I think yes. dogs who've got hairy faces don't notice it because they're used to seeing the hair in their face. That's it, it doesn't bother him got... at all. No, it wouldn't, would it? Because it's no. just like another thing in his just took it off him in the end. walking around his face, yeah. It was a little flower, yeah. a little pink flower he had stuck to his face. <laughs> Just thought, for God's sake, you're not averse to this, are you? He was quite happy. He was like, smile, look, I've got a big flower on my face. Oh. Silly boy. <laughs> but no, like you say, if it's a dog that maybe if you try to put a sticky note on just on the side of the face and, and for people listening, we do literally just mean a, a light sticky note that would come off with the slightest of breezes um if they look worried you just wouldn't do it you just try mm. a different version of the trick you wouldn't need to do do it that way mm. um but no i like hide hide face it's a really good one with a clicker because it's it's much easier to mark it whereas if you were trying to lure the dog to do it mm. uh, it's not very easy to actually get a treat in the mouth while they're doing it because the paw is often in the way <laughs> yeah and you'd probably need more hands wouldn't you you would need more hands yeah much yeah. more much more i would say mm. um so yes yeah, so a hide face what other tricks um let me think so probably things like wave so that you're oh, marking yeah. you're marking the moment when the paw is at its highest mm. so you can get a nice you know because give poor is reasonably easy to teach you know everybody how often have we had people in class that have gone well he can sit and he can give give poor um, it. so it's a real popular one isn't it um i'm not always mega keen on a give poor because i think you go through with with anything you teach your dog you sometimes go through a stage where they're offering it willy-nilly because it's the last oh, thing they God. learned 
Um, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't particularly bother me having a muddy paw on my leg because <laughs> I'm very rarely dressed in clothes that I don't <laughs> want to get muddy. But, you know, you might have visitors around who don't particularly want a big old paw on their best tights. Um, but, yeah, I do like a wave. So I think a wave is quite nice. So the clicker then comes in really handy for, as I say, marking the moment when their paw is at its highest. So you get a nice high wave. Yeah. Um, or a high five or something so it's it's not always about the motion is it it's it's about where the where the motion is going um so yeah that's that can be quite a good one hmm, i like a wave mm. my, my two have both got rubbish waves both of mine are kind of like is it is it somewhere a vague a vague <laughs> poke towards yeah. you yeah, I don't yeah. Know, I'm sure where to put this Whereas mm. Cassie loved the wave that she liked doing poor stuff. She found them quite nice. Mm. Piper's wave, Piper Old English, her, her, her wave is amazing because she pretty much is up here. So she looks like she's asking to answer a question in class. Oh, bless her. Right up high. Oh, bless her. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite crazy. It's a bit too much, um, but it's fun. But it's it looks fun. good, doesn't it? It's quite an impressive it's one, nice isn't it? One. Yeah, and you can see it. It's not as it's not as clear, obviously, with the smaller hairy dog as it might be with the taller dog that's that's got very very short fur but mm. you can see it on most dogs you know you yeah. from a distance you can see what your dog's doing if you are adding mm. work or you're doing it to sort of show someone um you can really really see it um teasel who's who's now gone from daytime to evening advanced classes oh yeah she does she, a cracking she, wave. her waves are brilliant yeah she's yeah. in fact she offers it more often than not at the moment she <laughs> loves the way she does love she? wave yeah, she's what to do? I'll just wave in case that's what you're after. Yeah, yeah exactly. If in doubt, if in doubt, <laughs> wave because everybody yeah. loves it. And she's right, I suppose, because everybody every time she does it, even if she hasn't been asked it, everybody goes, "Oh, look at that!" Oh, yeah, look at that wave. So oh, bless her. Yeah. Oh, she might not. So do it always works. Waving. Yeah, I'll try a wave. See what happens. It's a bit like the yeah. the, the pups that sit because that's when they've always had a treat. Exactly. Then I'll try sitting. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. be you're, you're way up aren't you you're so tall compared to them so they're peering up at you so the head's really lifted the bum drops down and then everybody goes oh look at the puppy sitting oh he's so clever <laughs> and within seconds the puppies are like well this works well yeah, yeah. it's their faces when you're then trying to ask them to do something like a stand or a down and they go mm. oh, no no i have to sit i don't get the treat if i do something. yeah that's it no 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 we put up don't try and me out of it <laughs> and nothing else yeah <laughs> it's not gonna work i tell you what i do like using the clicker for is um it is working on um some types of walking back so if, I've, mm. if i'm getting them to kind of reverse back towards me for example or i've asked them to walk away from me and then they're turning and then coming mm. back i like a click at the time they're turning or at the time they start moving um, because they can't see me because they've got the back turned and they're mm. too far to get a treat and they're now facing the wrong way to get a treat because you can guarantee yeah. through it they'd go over their heads and they'd never find it mm. so I, I quite like it for things like that or even if it's not it not even having to be reversing if I'm working on some 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 simple you know sits and downs and things like that but I've got my dogs ahead and facing away yeah exactly so they don't have to be looking at you mm. because they're listening for the click rather than yes. looking that's so it. that's why I think that some people get um a bit stuck the, the sort of people who use it as a remote control and kind of point <laughs> it at the dog <laughs> as they click so the dog needs the visual almost almost the pointing of the hand is the click yes. um the the um you know audio um oral um click is is separate isn't it so yeah so ideally the click is the marker not the moving of the hand and not the moving of the hand towards the treat bag it is the click and if it's the click they're listening for they don't have to be looking at you so that's when it's really handy isn't it um with, and with distance stuff as well mm. you know if you're sending yeah. them out to a marker and the minute they hit the marker you click <laughs> yeah they don't have to be looking at you so yeah that's that's another reason i think why it works so well really really handy um mm. so just just popped into my mind there i don't know just been talking about not being not looking at us and stuff and me thinking yeah i remember when cassie went deaf and trying to do marker training with her that was um target training that was hard um mm. have you i know i have because i had cassie um have you worked with any dogs that either are visually or um hearing impaired i haven't no actually haven't. i haven't you must find a dog um, they're brilliant <laughs> 
I'll put um, an advert in the paper. Yeah, put an advert in. If I if I if I get one, I'll send them your way. Um, <laughs> um, so so with um, just in case anyone listening has got a dog that's either blind or deaf, um, if a dog is blind, then they can still obviously hear the marker. They can still hear the clicker, um, but you know, you do definitely need to spend a little bit of time making sure they understand what the clicker is for, because it will suddenly, they'll suddenly hear it and go, oh, oh my God, where'd that come from? Um, but if you're working with a dog that is um, deaf and obviously they can't hear the click, so then there's a few different things that you can do um, to, to indicate, yes, you've done the right thing that I, I like you to do, but they obviously can't hear it. And so one of them is using a thumbs up, which I've done before for people's dogs. <laughs> And I can even when I'm saying yes, I've got a thumbs up for them because I'm so <laughs> doing it. And you can see they only look at me like I'm insane. Why are they thumbs up? <laughs> She's <up>? really enthusiastic. <laughs> 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 I love she gave my dog thumbs up. Um, but she seems to take to it quite nicely. Oh, I've got thumbs up there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> thumbs up's really handy, especially if you've got an, a dog that's that could hear and now they're losing their hearing or they've gone deaf. Um, they, 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 you know, are a bit more used to maybe looking at us um, for feedback. So giving them a thumbs up when they've got something right it just kind of makes them go oh oh I got something right oh lovely thumbs up um or the other thing I have done and I use this with Cassie and that was when I wanted more kind of specific so when I was reteaching her for her trip dog champion actually when I was reteaching her to do um go to marker um she obviously wasn't looking at me for me to do a thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really want to put my thumbs up anywhere else um, with her back to me. So, um, so I used. <laughs> she would have known, but it might not have been pleasant. Um, so I used a small, um, like little torch key ring, and I actually put to make it so that it wasn't like a sharp light. I put a ping pong ball over the top of it that I'd coloured in green, um, so it spread the light out slightly. So what oh, great I idea. do is as she went out to it, I could just move in slightly behind her to check where she'd gone. And as soon as she put her feet on the marker itself, I just then had my hand come around the side slightly and, and turn on the torch. Mm, so mm. Away, she's looking ahead away from me. She could see the light come on. Um, mm. so it then meant she could carry on looking forward like you just said before with the clicker she hasn't got to look round at me um, because you know we all, we've all seen it with our own dogs and, and, and dogs we work with they go out to a target they, they want to check they've got it right and they stop halfway to check where the handler is yeah they go, no keep going keep going yeah so, so you know that, that stopped Cassie doing that because she went out to it knowing that the marker would appear somewhere in front of her so okay. I could then use the torch and didn't have to worry about whether she was looking directly at it she could see it without looking up oh. um so yeah so a, a torch marker can be quite handy as well I mean there's no reason oh. why you use thumbs up and torches for dogs that can hear um but certainly if they can't you can still mark a train um and you, you just use a visual instead of something that they can hear hmm. or, or a touch on the hip maybe if it's obviously close up yeah. like for, for blind dogs I think they use um I think they use a flash of light for goldfish don't they yes um, if you've ever seen um on youtube um goldfish tricks where they teach goldfish to swim through hoops and yeah. and like header a, a basketball obviously a fish-sized <laughs> basketball through it through a hoop underwater i think they use a flash of light for the, for the marker with those don't they yeah. which is yeah. which is just just brilliant isn't it's it incredible isn't it to think I mean, you know, when, when for us, we're tricks trainers. It, it, it shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be strange for an animal to do tricks. But then when you actually think about it, you know, teaching a goldfish to go yeah. through a hoop using a light marker, that's just, it's it's mad and brilliant at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why would you? But then why wouldn't you? Well, exactly. If they like it, carry on with it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You could you Very could long. ask you could ask why why train a duck to go up steps to reach the sofa? <laughs> well, exactly. I, didn't I mean, why 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 wouldn't you though? The steps are for the why dogs. Wouldn't... The dogs don't <laughs> use the steps. The dogs jump over the steps, but the duck goes up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> and there's it's mice as well, isn't there? Have you seen on like YouTube on the with the mice that have been yeah. uh, trained to retrieve a ring and put the ring on the owner's finger yes, and stuff like yeah. that? And rats, it's amazing. I, I, I would love a rat, actually. Yes, they're, they're meant to be the most intelligent of rodents, aren't they? Mm, yeah, yeah, brilliant pets, but no, my husband is very, very <laughs> anti They're the cleanest of rats. Food. Apparently rats. so, yeah, apparently so. I've, I've had hamsters a long time ago, um, uh -huh. before, before I actually was 
doing tricks training officially um but i remember with my hands because i did actually i'd create little courses little mazes for them to go around yeah um, and they you know i'd ask them to come over to me and have a little bit of treat and they'd go up and sit on my shoulder for a bit of treat so i was inadvertently trick training but there was no oh. marker whatsoever because i'd never heard of it at that point um, no but we we got there but it was I, I the whole time i had them it was all luring everything was luring nothing, yeah. nothing was on a queue of any sort um, but yeah, I definitely feel if I'd had a, a, a clicker and had half an idea of what I was doing, um, <laughs> that, that, that could have been gone. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, years years ago, I had um, I had a pony when I first started um, when I first left school on the old YTS scheme, which mm. dates me. Um, so I went to a local stables and and worked my way through various little ponies and ended up with this um, sort of. Uh, peculiar looking pony really but he was incredibly clever and 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 I remember one lunchtime my boss had been talking about a pony he'd had as a child and he taught it to shake hands and I thought that sounds like a brilliant idea I definitely want to teach my pony to shake hands mm. so I, I went I left lunch early and went down the yard <laughs> and taught this pony to shake hands literally in about 20 minutes because he really was very clever um and I often think oh my god if I never had if I'd had a clicker then yes it, he would have definitely been like famous he would have been the best trick pony Everything. ever been. yeah he was very clever um and no yeah, had I had a clicker, it, it what might have been if only i'd known about clickers but i don't i don't know if anybody was using clickers um other than you know very very professional animal trainers obviously they've been really prevalent in um, marine mammal training just thinking that yeah for years haven't they um, but yeah, with horses and dogs, possibly, possibly not. No, it's sort of suddenly I'm trying to think back to when, when I first got my first dog as an adult. Yeah, when it I was not markers in general, was I, particularly, uh, were they? No, no, no. There was no, not even a marker word. No. no, I'm not sure when they kind of came into common usage for pet dogs and um, I obedience and stuff. Date. There must be around somewhere. <laughs> there must be info on this. <laughs> now, oh yeah, there must be. There must be some. I have a question. Yeah, but yeah, I'll... Mm. Oh, sorry. I have a question for you about clickers and shaping, um, okay. which is from Tracy, who's got Minna oh. and Ivy and Ethel. Oh. <laughs> and um not that she's she can't hear this um but i i posed a, a couple of people if they had any questions about clicker training um she, she's put i've i often use clicker when shaping a new behavior to help my dog to get closer to the end behavior i'm yeah. looking for and find this speeds up their learning are there exercises or times when you advise against using a clicker um <laughs> I personally don't use them for really close up work because as we said, sorry, I'm gonna to have to go downstairs and get my um charger. Put my phone on charge. Um yeah. Uh I don't particularly use one for real close up work, like we said before, because of the risk of death in your dog. And I don't tend to use them for recall. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um because I I know some people do, but I don't personally don't think there's a there's a particularly clickable moment. It's a hard one, isn't it? Cool. Maybe finding, um, yeah, when they turn, to, maybe when they turn to you. Yeah. Um, I just I just don't bother, and I don't use them for toilet training. But again, again, I know some people possibly do. Um, so I don't think. Other than the close-up issue, I don't think there's anything that I would particularly say don't. No. But there's a couple of things that I just don't bother with them with. No. I've, I've seen um, people that, that have clicker trained that, that look like they're doing really well with the clicker in general. And then we come to a recall exercise and there's, there's a click when the dog turns to look at them. There's a click when they start to move. There's a click halfway to act to them. There's a click when they get there, a click when they sit. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> it's just constant click, 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 click. And right. Coming so back. are they treating for every click then? No. No, it's just, oh my God, the dog's doing it. The dog's doing it. Let's get these clicks going. Let's let the dog know I'm happy with right. all of this. So then they're kind of um, diluting the clicker. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because they're obviously there's different people use, do use a clicker in different ways. Mm. Um, 
I know some some agility trainers use the clicker as a kind of more of a keep going signal through the weaves. Yes. Um, but then that means that they're clicking without treating. Yeah. And I suppose, I suppose you, well, they obviously get away with it. They obviously, it was the worst for them. Yeah. Um, but there, there are, are, there are different schools of thought mm. on whether you can click without treating. Yeah, I think it's if, if whether you, you can use it sometimes it. as a keep going signal, but then I tend to use the keep going signal. I tend to yeah. use good as a keep going signal. I do yeah. tend to make sure I treat for every click. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. But I suppose I there's say, you, you could use the yeah. clip as a, as a keep going if that's all you're using it for, perhaps, and then it's not going to confuse. Maybe, yeah. Dog. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, that's how I've seen, or I've seen um, people. I've come to class or I've, I've gone to them and, and they've said, oh, you know, I've tried to get recall, I'm not doing very well. Um, I've started, I bought a clicker this week and I've gone, oh, good, that's good. Um, uh, you know, how are you getting on with that? Oh, brilliant. What I do now is when the dog's outside, I click and the dog comes in for a treat. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But you're not using the clicker as a, as a marker. marker. No. You that's kind of the new it as an attention getter. Yeah. That, that replaces come. <laughs> yeah it's being used as a whistle so it's just fine again but then you yeah you can't then use it for anything else because that now click now means come and get a treat yeah exactly fine. That's, what you want. that's fine yeah. so then you'll need whistle. to use something else as a marker really yeah yeah that's it yeah <laughs> so there are lots of ways of using them and not there's not to say they're wrong any other ways are wrong but totally i think it, it, i think it, it depends it. i think the dog will learn whatever you make the mm. clicker clunk come to mean yes um because i know some people um click click for movement and then just feed for duration i i do that yeah so um you know when the dog's moving towards a sit then you click and bum hits the ground and then i'd reward and then i wouldn't multiple I wouldn't click multiple times while the dog's still in the sit because to me once you've clicked they can move if they want to mm, that's it yeah um and sometimes you do you know you'll click for the sit and then throw the treat away so that they get up and get it and then they reset for another sit yep. but I know some people do multi click multiple times while the dog's still in the so they don't use the click as the end of the behavior yep. the dog will learn whatever you you make the click mean that's it that's it and as long as you're consistent i think they just learn whatever it is it's it's what's comfortable for for the individual person mm. yeah, what makes definitely. sense to the individual person i think as well mm. yeah yeah definitely i mean there's no you know say when i've had people that have said i've, I've got a click and this is what i'm doing with it and i've gone okay that's absolutely fine so just mm. check is this what you want to use it for you know mm. there are lots of ways of using it you know we can use it to mark the individual behavior you're using it you're using it as the recall cue or as a cue for a stop or whatever it might be um, mm. if that's what you want to use it for that's fine we'll still teach them the word as well in case you haven't got the clicker um, mm. what i do if i'm teaching whistle training um, exactly the same thing um, yeah. and sometimes they say yeah yeah i'd like to keep it as that and sometimes they say oh oh we can use it for other things oh no i'd like to do that instead that's fine. Mm. I've only had it a couple of days. It's, it's, it's not going to be ingrained yet. Don't worry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you've got a little bit of wiggle room if they've been doing it just a bit wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah. But if it's been going on for months, then yeah, hard, you, yeah, that ship sailed, kind of thing. You need yeah. to you need to think of something else. Oh, I know what I've just thought of. Um, so this is something that I've 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 not looked into it enough, but I've never really understood how it worked. Now, bear in mind, I do click a train. I have clickers in my training bags, you know, and I, if I'm going somewhere or I've got a trainer at my place or our place, um, then I will use the clicker for something brand new or something to sharpen. Um, mm. but there are times when I'm not the only person in the class with a clicker. Um, and, and when you're in an actual clicker specific class and you're going to mm. have numerous people clicking at different times, how do the dogs know which click is which them? click is theirs? Yes. I mean, I suppose they just, they just respond to the one nearest to them, I guess, don't they? Yeah, it must be. Because, like, you know, because, yeah, I've, I've done clicker training classes and they do all tend to respond to the correct one. They do, don't they? Um, not all sort of running to each other and going, oh, I'll get a treat for that. Where's exactly. my treat? <laughs> so I suppose, yeah, I mean, I, I guess a, a clicker training class, you want as much space in between them as mm. you can have. Um, but no, I've, I've, I just think they know, I, they know their own click. 
they know yeah. which one's nearest to them i suppose the one that the one that's coming from mum yeah i suppose you were saying earlier, you know, how, how people use them like a remote control i suppose if they yeah. are looking and they, they're used to everything else they've they've seen that that maybe the owner's face is lit up a sec for a second as they yeah. do the click and they see the hand signal and and the hand other hands heading towards the treat pouch perhaps so there's lots of things mm. going on with it that might contribute might in it i mean if if there's if, yeah, if it it's noise and, and mine hear something click like, out of the room they come to me and go, oh, do we get a treat for that? Mm. Bloody don't, I've known it was. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I didn't have a clicker on me and they heard someone else's click, they would assume that they could get something from that person. Mm. Uh, but that's because they're greedy. <laughs> they like to try it on. Um, oh, you have a clicker, that must mean you have treats. Um, mm. But yeah, I've, I've been in plenty of classes where I've been clicking, someone else has clicked, and they certainly haven't sort of turned around to them and gone oh I get something from you as well what did you want me to do no I no I think they just they just learn which one is their click hmm. um clever. yeah <laughs> it's very clever they are aren't they they're quite clever dogs really aren't they <laughs> they can be on occasion and on, on, <laughs> on, on the odd occasion they can surprise us <laughs> and even impress hmm. us <laughs> Whereas absolutely Echo, I haven't used a clicker with Echo just thinking about it it's all been marker but you I use a verbal marker. Yeah, but I think that might be more because I would happen to be like doing all the greens for all the birds and I'll suddenly think, mm. oh, I've got a couple of peas here. She'll wander in and I'll go, oh, let's do some stuff. So I haven't then maybe got a clicker on me. I've just sort of got on with it. Mm. Um, yeah, I haven't, hasn't even considered, I haven't even considered using a clicker yet. If I go to do something with the dogs or I know I've got like a, an online class booked with, with um, Rich Curtis or something, Mm. I'll get my clicker ready for them. Make sure I've got it, even if I don't use yeah. it. Make sure I've got it on me. Isn't that funny? Mm. I'll use it for the dog. Mm. Yeah, it's the same process, same tricks, same same methods, pretty much, just without the click. No, she, but she definitely understands that yes means a treat. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she said yes. Oh, lovely! I'll get something for that. Yeah, she'll stop what she's doing and come and get come and get something for that. Oh god, yeah. So yeah, I wonder what she'd do with the click. She'd probably try and eat it, knowing her. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. She's Possibly. A She's a bit of a twin. <laughs> right, let me just... So do you find with your dogs... Um, so I was thinking earlier, because we have our favourite clickers, don't we? If you then maybe, rather than use an eye click, you used a, a completely different clicker, yeah. do you think they kind of translate that that sound, although it's a different click, is still a click? Do you see what I mean? Yes, I, I, I would say they do. Um, mm, I do too. There's, there's times where... I, again I feel like the click would be the better sound but I haven't mm. got a clicker on me so they're snoozing they shouldn't react um so I'll go myself right okay click up and they'll go oh yeah we get a treat for that yeah see there's an understanding there um, yeah. or if you know I don't know if, if John's doing something in a different room and he makes a funny noise it sounds like a click yeah then, then you know the ears prick up oh oh mum do we get something for dad clicking mm. <laughs> yeah um, yes yeah, but again it's it's amazing isn't it how they they do tend to generalize like yeah. that sort of mechanical click doesn't yeah. have to be necessarily the same clicker because I think when I when I first had boo and I started with I just can't even remember which sort of clicker it was and then I bought a different type and I, I thought oh do I have to am I going to have to now charge this new clicker yeah um and no, no she seemed to understand it was still a clicker yeah. even though it was a different one and yeah. I, and to be honest I don't always bother charging the clicker nowadays no. um I just get on and start teaching stuff and I think they st they learn within a few minutes that a click means a tree yeah it's coming I think it um, can help yeah. if you've got maybe a dog that's got no focus or hasn't even had treat training before you know hasn't had any experience at all of you're going to get a reward for spending time with me doing something because otherwise they just bugger off yeah um yeah but yeah I, I, I found the same as, as you you know you just that if they if they go oh, what we doing what you got there we've got some food that's quite nice oh that's a nice sound i've got a treat lovely oh that sounds yeah. you know i've got a treat <laughs> they yeah oh, what was i doing when i got that well, what was i doing when i heard yeah. that sound and then got that treat and uh, yeah i think they pick it up really quickly <laughs> yeah. i think it's important i think it's more important for, for novice clicker trainers or or new yeah. clicker trainers yeah. to charge the clicker because I think it's good for them to practice the mechanics of click treat click treat you know yeah. the, the coordination yeah. um but with um no with with new dogs I don't tend to charge it I just get on with it yeah. but yeah I think some people if they're not used to the whole handling the clicker and the treats and the dog 
just need that little bit of practice to yeah it's a nice way of practicing especially if it's something the dog already knows you know if you or if you can't wait for them to look at you and just charge it that way it's mm. a nice way of getting focus and charging the clicker for people listening if you don't know what we mean by charging the clicker it's literally just it's just the term used for teaching the dog that when you hear a click you you're going to get a treat for it so they're sort mm. of listening out for it um, we don't mention mean plugging it into a usb cable <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but i suppose in a way you are aren't you you're yeah. giving it power you're power. giving it power yeah. aren't you um as opposed to I'm yeah as opposed to... Out with one. I'm surprised there isn't a plug-in bloody clicker yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> somehow <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah hmm interesting one Okay, so um, so for Petrix Day, I'm going to be showing people how to use a clicker, um, and um, seeing showing people a few tricks that I feel are really really good with a clicker as well. Um, so that's going to be um, some 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 nice, nothing too technical really um, when it comes to to that, but things like. Um, uh, nose touches and, and chin targets could really be really good with um, helping someone learn to use a clicker um things mm. like, uh, twist and spins might be a bit harder because if a dog's new to it you don't really know if they're going to turn back at the wrong time or if they're going to stop halfway and go where'd the treat go yeah i think <laughs> that's, that's potentially it. a fraught for, yeah. for a new clicker yeah, trainer hard, I think possibly um maybe they wouldn't they would struggle to to know the right time yeah there's, there's a lot okay. going on at once isn't there yeah so, exactly with the dogs but things like that um I'm trying to think what else i tend to use it for, for for newbies and just things like eye contact and even just stuff they they already know um oh yeah definitely. you know a sit yeah. yeah basically i think there's so much you can tell about people's kind of handling ability just by watching them teach a simple sit <laughs> yes because um, <laughs> pe people can make such a fist of it yeah <laughs> um yeah. Or, or just you know you, you can really tell people's handling ability by by watching them do a simple sit um and the time and the timing for a sit is really is really easy to see isn't it you know there's a clear clickable moment bum hits floor yeah that's, that's when the treat that's when the click comes there's no amb ambiguities then yeah and most most dogs when they're starting actual training have have at least tried sitting to get their owner's attention or yeah see if they get something in return even if they haven't learned sit on cue um <clears throat> but they've, they've got an understanding that well I'll put my bum on the floor they seem to like this i'll try that so exactly. yeah, that's, really, that's a real good one for um for starting off definitely um mm. So yeah, so there's going to be lots, lots of things taught clicker wise. There was something that Brilliant. just came to my head and then went straight out the other ear, and I can't think what it was. I was going to say. I'm trying to see if there was anything obvious. Like, did I see something in the lounge that made me think? Oh, I'll ask that. <laughs> Who knows what was I thinking? Something, something popped in my head. I don't know. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Little exercises they can do even without the, without the dog, isn't there? Oh God, yeah, definitely. Get them walking around and mm. clicking the moment somebody's left foot hits the floor, or yes. or you know, what's the one they always tell you to do um, is to watch the watch the news and click every time the newsreader blinks, or you know, stuff like that. Yeah, or so there's a certain um, word or, and or, mm. so sort of stuff. Bounce a, bounce a ball and hit the moment and click the moment it hits the floor, or bounce a ball yeah. and hit click the moment it reaches its highest level. Yeah, and stuff. There's loads of stuff you can do to practice your mechanics, isn't there? That's it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Loads, loads, and loads, and loads, loads of ways of using them. Cool. Okay, so um, I, I can't think what it was I was going to say. <laughs> it will come to you. It will come, to, come to you as soon as we finished. Can't think. <laughs> I don't think what it was. What obviously aside from clicker train, I can't think and think what what particularly I was going to ask about. But it came in, went again. But there you go. That's my. That's how my brain typically works, as you know. Um, <laughs> did you do the thing I asked you to do one second ago? No, I forgot. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. So I think what we'll do is we'll we'll finish here. Um, 
thank you so so much for um, my pleasure and, and talking to me I, I love talking to you anyway Kate but it's obviously really nice to talk about something that um so specific to <laughs> to tricks well, we don't often get a chance do we because we're no. sort of like ships that pass in the night at work yeah. aren't we yeah. and um, no it's really it's really great to, to chat to you actually it's been really good <laughs> nice not to just be saying all right there's a register in there and uh, yeah. like, and so can't make tonight <laughs> yeah yeah and then which dog was it that ate that yeah. thing yeah and is there, is there enough loo row in the loo <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> brilliant <laughs> excellent right so we will um come to a close in in a, a few seconds for the people that are listening thank you hugely to kate gasson for talking to us um and if you wanted to look up what kate does with um, billy and with boo and training in general like i say you can catch kate at dog training for essex and suffolk but also at fido's which is f i d-o-e-s um and yep. uh, that's that is in fi fido does dog does um so have a look online and and see what uh what kate does with regards to tricks and everything else like that and um, we've got lots and lots of tricks um, bits and pieces coming up for pet tricks day not just for dogs obviously kate and i our worlds are pretty much dominated by by dogs and dog training um but um yeah we've got a lot of different bits and pieces for all the different pets out there as well so um if you haven't already follow pet tricks day on facebook um and there are also quite a few posts on there that allow you to sign up to get all sorts of uh, tutorials and, and, and tips etc for tricks training right well um i shall leave you to the rest of your day i think kate i know you've got classes this evening and you know uh, much? we will we will think of a new topic and, and have a chat about that perhaps in a couple of weeks time Brilliant. yeah <laughs> look forward to it excellent um thank you very much and i will speak to you soon kate bye